freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for this week's Olympic Games. And joining me to break it all down, it's Kyle Porter, KP. Welcome to First Cut After Dark. I've got a lot going on. I'm just, the goal here is just don't say anything too stupid, right? Like, it's just don't, yeah. don't get in trouble. It's 3.37 a.m. where I live, Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm watching the fifth hole of a bronze medal seven man playoff. And I, I just, I mean, what a night. So much fun. It's not even over yet. They're still playing right now. <laughs> I, dude, this is, I've never, I've never been more jealous of you being on the, on the West coast. Never been more jealous. I stayed up until like four 30 on Thursday, the round one. And I haven't, I haven't recovered. I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I should like, be in a hospital somewhere like i feel so bad from staying up that late and here we are again on sunday the only consolation is we get su sunday is off i guess right because there's, there's i mean no action I, producer jake will probably have us doing 30 minutes on the <laughs> senior women's open us open don't give him any ideas um xander shoffley Wins gold for the United States of America, certainly not without a little bit of drama. Kind of two different sides to Xander's final round. The first, let's call it uh, 13 holes, completely in control, KP. He went out in four under. He was passing every single test that was asked of him until he got to 14, which we can kind of talk about separately. 14 was an absolute circus. Uh he was what do you okay I, I was thinking about this because i was writing about it he seemed to kind of it wasn't pretty coming home right starting on i don't know when it started i don't know if he hit a couple i was following a bunch of different stuff i don't know if he hit some loose shots on 11 12 13 leading into 14 14 was ugly and none of it after that was really that pretty either do you think that was okay kind of feeling the weight of uh, a tournament, a gold medal, whatever, or was it, you know, uh, Sabatini shooting 61 guys kind of charging at him or, or maybe a combination of all those things. Probably a combination. It is a little bit different though, when, you know, it, it it's, fourth and on doesn't matter. And when you have someone like Sabatini who posted a number so early and you're like, wow, I, I could really be coughing up not only a gold here, but a silver here. Like I, I think it matters when it is such a top heavy quote unquote payout where there's only three medals and, and guys are literally doing anything they can. They're not playing for fourth place money. They're not playing for fifth place FedEx cup points. They're playing to do whatever they can to come at you. So I think it's, I think it's even more pressure packed than normal. You can see the bread man in my background, by the way, just right over here in my in the mirror of my of my uh, poster there, Augusta poster. Bread man is CT pan, by the way. But um, so I think there are a couple of different ways to look at the Xander thing, right? So fourteen was so bad, and then, like I said, it, he had a couple of shots after that that you're like, ah, oh, that's that's pretty bad too. Like it did, it wasn't like fourteen was an anomaly. It it felt like fourteen was kind of like the beginning of what could have been the end. And so I, I was texting you and producer Jacob. And I was like, freaking Xander. Like he, he, all this talent and, you know, you hear all this stuff about, Oh, he's, he's such a, he's such a competitor. He's a closer. And it's like, I haven't seen it. You know, I, I haven't seen it. And I thought that the, I thought, I thought the end was, was awesome because you kind of did see it, right? He makes birdie on 17 and then the shot on 18 to close it out. That was, that was real. That was real, you know? Yes. And I, I feel like I've been vocal about like, Hey, Xander, Xander's not closing it out. Xander's not closing it out. And he did it from out in front and it's not, look, the field is not us open or uh, you know, PGA championship good, but it's still a big deal. And I, I thought that what I saw from Xander on Sunday, at least at the very, very end and throughout the tournament was just, I, I thought, I thought the way he put it together and then the way he closed it out was actually really impressive. Yeah. 17 and 18 were absolutely legit. Like that was uh, a great finish 14, man. It was an ugly 
bogey KP, but at the same time was a great bogey and could have been way worse. So he blasts one way right, literally into the trees in which I bet you a lot, a lot of times on the PGA tour, they don't even find that ball. And then when they do, it is like just, just in there far enough where he can get two club lengths out. He can kind of punch out because remember he had a provisional on 14 and the provisional was like way worse. Like he would, it was, he was staring a triple in the face if he did not find his original ball. Well, that's what I was going to say. His, his third, what would have been his third was kind of dead behind some trees. He, he pitches out four, five. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he could have made a seven, right? And that's if he pitches out, hits one onto the green and two putts and, uh, and he was he was in jail. He was in jail on the left. Yeah, I mean that was finding that ball. It's crazy. You you think back to uh, even Rom on ten or nine at Tory, right? When he when he was like out of bounds over there. It wasn't out of bounds, but it looked out of bounds. Just these tiny like m- micro moments in tournaments that we may or may not remember. They affect your Wikipedia page in a huge way. Yes, they do. You know, like it. Uh, yeah. They Fred affect- Man just got third, by the way. I know. Of course, it's uh, CT Pan who comes out of a seven man playoff with the likes of Paul Casey, Colin Morikawa, Hideki Matsuyama, Rory McElroy, and wins the bronze. He showed a 74 <laughs> on Thursday. He beat two guys on Thursday and won the bronze. That's yeah. so that's so impressive. We're we're gonna get to CT. It was that's special. Yeah, he could have he could have phoned it in. We'll talk about that. Uh, Xander gets the gold here, and uh, I, I don't, I'm I'm very interested to see how guys like you and history and what this looks like, right? Because Xander's resume is weird, KP, right? It's it's a couple of years without a victory. Um, it is the fact that he has now two wins on his official World Golf ranking page that don't show up as PGA Tour wins, European Tour wins, Sunshine yeah. Tour wins, like nothing, <laughs> right? The, the Tour <laughs> Championship and then this one here. So it's, it's a really strange resume that he has and i think he is I, actually i don't know i i don't know how he is viewed amongst the top players in the world i don't either um it, it's it's because you you, you kind of group him into that but he hasn't really i mean he hadn't won in two and a half years that's a long time if you're a like can you imagine john rom not winning for two and a half years anywhere I mean that's di- that's a difficult thing to imagine. You know, Rory hasn't been great, but he's he's won a like four times in the last two and a half years. Yeah, you know, and so I think that matters. And I I just I don't know. It, it's it's he's a little cursed in that like you keep seeing and hearing about like this is the guy, this is the guy, and then he keeps not doing it and not winning. And so you're like, is he the guy? Because I, I like what I'm seeing is not matching up with what I'm like hearing from guys like Phil and, you know, even more Kawa, I think was talking about early in the week in their press conference, like how good Xander is. JT talks about how good he is and how hard he works. And I I understand all that. At some point you have to like go win, you know, And, and he's, he's done it before, but like you can't have these two to three year stretches when you're supposed to be one of the guys kind of entering your prime. So I, I honestly, and I, this is what I wrote. I think this could be a little bit of, and I hope it is, you know, jet fuel for him going into, you know, the majors next year and, and these tournaments that, that we expect guys like him to compete for. Yeah. And there's still a lot of golf and a lot of money to be earned of uh, to coming down the playoffs here. And what I thought was cool about Xander is, you know, he, there, there was, there was, I think it was Steve Sands who was doing the interviews afterwards. He was kind of asking some really good questions about how meaningful is this, but how meaningful is this that you're doing it in Tokyo, which is a place that you also have ties to his grandparents live in Tokyo. I think they said his dad kind of learned the game or found golf for the first time in Tokyo. And it's just one of these kind of kismet situations where, uh, a guy gets to get it gets an opportunity to get it done in a place that's even more meaningful than usual. Yeah, and he talked about that. If you go back and re- I don't know if you read the transcripts, but him and Morikawa on whatever it was Tuesday talking about uh, the Olympics and Japan, and they talked about a bunch of different things, and they were both really good on it. Like they said, they like the the way they talked about. Japan and the culture and the Olympic and just kind of tied everything together. I thought it was 
<laughs> it was it was great. Like I, I, you know, I talk for a living and I'm like 10 years <laughs> older than them and I, I wouldn't have been able to put it together that well. So I, I, I thought I thought that part of it was cool. Sometimes do you ever feel like it's difficult to find like a uh, like an angle with Xander? You know, I, I think that he's talented and he's young and he's exciting and all this stuff. But sometimes I, I just I don't know where the angle is. You, you kind of have the, the dad story. You kind of I, I don't know. There's there's some things going on, but I don't ever feel like I have like a like a OK, this is my this is my angle. This is kind of my storyline. Yes. And that is it's kind of a good thing for him, right? There, there's not, it's not like, okay, so angles come from kind of extremes, right? Whether it's like an extreme upbringing or an extreme flaw in your game or winning a master's and being the first to do it for your country, like the extremes. And he doesn't really have a lot of extremes. He's a very like middle ground kind of guy, both in personality. Uh, I mean, how, how excited was he when, when that final puck goes down? I think he gave it like a, half smile turn around like that that's kind of cool it, moment <laughs> is that is that good though like is that is that um well, i think I mean, it's good for him it's not good for us it's not good for you i think it's good for him <laughs> for sure not good for us but i i think about like and maybe maybe this is a chicken and the egg thing but i think about the great players of the last just let's say since we've been covering uh, 10 15 years whatever and they all have but I don't know. He he just he he doesn't seem to have the electricity that like a JT or a Rory or a Spieth or somebody like that has. And maybe that's just because we haven't seen him in like these big moments and and winning huge events. Again, maybe it's a chicken or the egg. Maybe we have to see it before we're like, oh, this is kind of who Xander is. But sometimes I just I feel like he doesn't have that like whatever the the it thing is the nonsense thing that gets talked about so much in sports sometimes i feel like he lacks that a little bit and that's why that's kind of why i led with like it was good to see him win from this position because sometimes it feels like he just kind of wilts away at the end and maybe i'm trying to tie like personality to winning too much but do, do like does what i'm saying resonate with you yeah, it does. I mean, he's he's basically a more boring version of Patrick Cantlay. Uh, but Cantlay ha was what a, mu a much better amateur player, and he has tragedy that people talk about all the time, right? So or, or injury, excuse me. So it's like it, you know, uh, he just doesn't have that. So there's there's not something to grab onto and say, oh wow, this victory was so amazing for Xander because now he's proven himself. Now he's climbed the mountain. It's like, well, we've kind of thought he should be this guy. So yes, this does resonate and it's kind of difficult. I find him to be one of the more difficult players on tour to, to talk about because of it. Yeah, I agree. I think he is too. And that, that again, that's not a him problem. That's a, right. <laughs> that's an, that's an us problem. Um, yeah. The counter is that's great for him. He is level headed. He never gets too high. He never gets too low. He never has something hanging over his head. He doesn't have the idea of going. Yeah. It's, it's perfect for him. It's terrible. You, for us. you know what it's like? It's a little like, like Ricky Fowler without the, you know, elite marketing campaign. Right. Like, okay. like I think Ricky is, um, man, I actually like that comp. I, I just thought of that. Like right <laughs> now, I, there it is. Right. that's what I need at three fifty in the morning. <laughs> I think that, I think that Ricky is pretty just, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. He's very low key, just doesn't get too high or too low. That that's, that's what I feel about Xander. Xander just doesn't have maybe the following or the kind of, uh, I don't know who hoopla like recognition around him that that somebody like a Fowler does. Well, is Xander uh, is Xander just is he just like new new Ricky? Uh, I mean, I kind of hope so, and I kind of hope not. Right? I mean, I guess we'll find out. We'll see if he carries. We'll see if he carries the uh, the gold medal around in his bag for the next four years, and do you, you know pops it on everywhere. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I doubt that. <laughs> uh, do you think it's dumb that we tie kind of personality and like these? kind of ambiguous traits to to winning and being great yes okay but um i think that's it's, fair it's not uncommon and it's and it's not and it's not only golf that that gets done in right right, right michael right. jordan would i mean without the the all this the, the the level of stories of michael jordan's greatness are almost greater than the six championships you know what i mean so it, it is not unique to golf it is silly uh but i 
I, I understand as humans why we do that. Yeah. And again, maybe, maybe John Rahm is as kind of vanilla as Xander. We've just seen him in more winning situations. So we're able to kind of tie more things to him to, to kind of like give us some context for his career or whatever, if that makes any sense. I don't know if anything makes sense at four in the morning <laughs> with what I'm saying, but, um, and this is like not to diminish, like, and, and you know, I, I had Xander as my top 10, my, one of my bets coming into the week because he d- destroys these small field, no cut events. Like he That's just, right. and, and, and I think some of that is instructive. Like he's, he's the cream rising to the top guys, guys like him, should always finish in the top 10 at events like this because you get a guaranteed four rounds and he's just better than like 85% of this field. Like just straight up, he's just better than them. And so I I don't know. I don't even really totally know what I'm trying to say. I just, I I thought it was great that he, that he uh, won this event. And I just, it makes me a little bit question like, does he have kind of that it about him? And this tournament kind of made me feel more like he does. Yeah. I'm happy he didn't wilt because um, that we'd be having a different conversation right now. And I feel <laughs> for like sure haunt. Yeah. It would be, it would be tough for the next couple of weeks or months it, it, or years until he wins again. And I think the shot he hit into 18, it's like, man, maybe he does like that was big time, right? To yeah. win a gold medal at you feeling all this, you know, everything kind of on your shoulders. That was, that was huge. And, uh, and, he, and he took his medicine, right? I mean, he had to like punch yeah. it out there, get to a number and hit a shot and roll the putt in. And he did it. Yeah. So I walk away from that being super impressed by kind of how he, how he shut it down there at the end. I also walked away being super impressed with Rory Sabatini, uh, <laughs> who Jacob and I were talking before we went hot. The long con worked KP. The long, like, does, 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 does the shtick ever work? It did here, right? This is unbelievable. It's <laughs> truly <laughs> incredible. So uh, for, those, for those that don't where, know. Where do we even the, begin? All right. So I guess I think it was two years ago. Uh, his wife is from Slovakia. So he, um, I don't know what the process is, but becomes a c- citizen of Slovakia so that he can compete internationally under the flag, which includes these Olympic Games, gets into the Olympic Games as a Slovakian athlete and fires off. Uh, I-, I say this kind of tongue in cheek because there hasn't been many of them, but an Olympic record, the greatest round of golf ever shot at the Olympics, a 61 posts a number, puts a lot of pressure on these guys coming in, ends up finishing uh on the silver medal position but an unbelievable final round for rory and uh i guess it was i guess it was worth going through all the all the citizenship stuff well it was really funny because all week if you like saw his quotes or read his transcripts or whatever he kept saying they like talking about people from slovakia (laughs) you have to say we Roy. You and I, you and I will get attached to like a NCAA tournament ta- team and start saying we about like Stephen F. Austin, right? Like that's how easy it is for us to say we. Yeah. And, he, and he, he, as a citizen, didn't even say we. He was saying yeah. they about, and, and like I actually think his angle was uh, benevolent. Like he he talked a lot about like trying to inspire youth golfers and and like the the yeah. new wave of of golfers in slovakia and maybe that's just a maybe that's an alibi i i have no idea but i it was at least, he at least stuck with his story you know and then he goes out and fire i mean i think that's what i'll remember about these olympics is Roy sabatini shooting 61 in the middle of the night and people all of us just going crazy on twitter and and like that that, that was uh that was a really fun couple hours. He shot a 61 with two bogeys. Two bogeys on the card. 61 with two bogeys on the card, and he was full-on fist-pumping his putt on 18 with, oh. with, when it was two feet out. Oh, he knew maybe it was more. dead in the heart because he'd been feeling it all day long. I mean, it was it was a moment. It, it, was, yeah. it was something. It really was. And... Uh, Yes, that's I think Slovakia's third medal. So it's I mean it's actually kind of a big deal, right? It's, for yeah, him it's a huge deal, yeah. For him to win silver, to do it like he did, it was just it was an unbelievable his wife's on the bag, like it's yeah. unbelievable. It really is kind of a I mean it's it's yeah, it's truly a crazy story. And 
Yeah, coming from you know him trying to holler in at Spieth at the Players Championship to, oh. as Spieth's hitting into him. It's been a it's been a great Rory Sabatini year. Top Rory if it beats out uh, the other Rory McIlroy in this. Did you see? Scenario. Did you see my list of uh, things that I can't believe this wasn't Rory, Rory McIlroy? Yeah, it was pretty strong. Do you have it handy? Yeah, I'll pull it up uh, while you intro the next thing that we're going to talk about. Well, how about this? Um, or the next thing is an ad break. So I will say this. Uh, Slovakia's oldest medalist, now Rory Sabatini at 45 years old. And to put into context what he did in the final rounds by shooting a 61, getting back into contention. So this is from Justin Ray. Uh, Sabatini entered the final round seven shots back. This is obviously not a major championship, but nobody has ever come back from seven or more shots entering the final round to win a major. Sabatini falls short, but it's going to earn him a silver medal. Uh, here's the tweet. By the way, it's it, they're walking out. For, <laughs> they're oh, walking they out for the the medal ceremony right now, and it's weird to see guys who wear Nike and Adidas and guys who wear Adidas and Nike. So Xander's in all Nike. Uh, Sabatini looks like he bought his jumpsuit at like Academy on the way in. Yeah, these these uh, these track suits are tough. By the way, <laughs> I like the. I would wear the U.S. stuff. That's. The U.S. Yeah, stuff sure. is, is really I want one solid. of those masks. Those masks are like, uh, they're tough, man. It, I yeah, they one are. Those. No one would mess with me if I'm out there. <laughs> okay, pull, pull the tweet back up, producer Jacob. So none of, imagine telling yourself in 2018 that none of these, the following people would be Rory McIlroy. Former elite amateur who played in Ireland wins the 2019 Open Championship in Portrush. Obviously, that was Shane, Shane Lowry. Lowry. Two golfers with four or more majors play in the final pairing at the 2021 PGA at Kiowa. That was Brooks Kepka and Phil Mickelson. Crazy. And then finally, a golfer actually named, <laughs> literally named Rory, represents a European country. Remember, uh, Sabatini didn't become Slovakian until 2019. So a, a human named Rory represents a European <laughs> country and makes a Sunday charge in Tokyo for the silver medal. None of those human beings are Rory McIlroy. That's incredible. It's impossible. That is impossible. It's impossible. It, tru it truly is impossible. <laughs> Um, before people tweet at me, no one has come back from seven or more entering the final round to win a major since Paul Laurie did it when he was 10 back at the 1999 Open. Also, who could forget? Who could forget? How about this? And I tweeted this as well, but I wanted to get your take on this. Um, the idea that no fans, okay? So I, the way that I felt about no fans on Sunday during this final round was that I felt it it was more tense. Uh, because when I think about like Kiowa, when Phil was going through his final f few holes, you have everybody as he's walking from tee to green, you know, oh, Phil, oh, go get him, Phil, this, that, the other thing. And he's kind of acknowledging, he's using the energy, it's building to this. I thought the silence, uh, I thought it created more tension. I was very nervous throughout. I, see, I didn't, I didn't feel, usually I feel the nervousness on at least a couple of holes during a major championship. I, I actually didn't feel it a ton during the Masters this year. I felt it for like 10 seconds before Xander hit it in the water on 16 at Augusta. Ah, uh, yeah. I felt it definitely at the US Open, definitely at the PGA. And I, I just I didn't feel it today. And I don't know that could be a me problem, that could be a three in the morning problem. I don't know what it is, but I didn't I, I don't know. It wasn't I, I think I think I'm the opposite. I think if there would have if there would have been fans there, I would have felt it more than I did uh, as as it played out. Yeah. I think like, it I think it I think it hurts the event that we've had fans come back back now and and then you're reverting to maybe to that's the no why i felt thing. differently because i've never felt i never felt that the silence was tension until this week but maybe yeah. it's because we've had fans and then now i i don't have them and i felt differently about it so maybe yeah. that's what it is the change that makes sense yeah i think i think that does make sense uh, um they're doing the metal. They're doing the metal thing now. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We gotta talk about this seven way playoff, and we have an update on our Olymp Olympic draft contest. But first, we're gonna take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. And we're back. It was 
a seven-way playoff for bronze KP that both Hideki Matsuyama and Paul Casey could have ended well in regulation multiple times. They did not. They were part of the playoff. And when you have names like Casey and Hideki and Rory McIlroy, that is, and Colin Morikawa, you certainly don't expect the winner to be C.T. Pan, especially after the way he started, you mentioned this earlier. He opened up on Thursday with a 74. It was the third worst score of anybody in the field. He comes back. He fires rounds of 66, 66, and 63 to even get himself in a playoff. Pretty special final three days. That was so impressive. He was T57 on Friday morning, and he walks away with it. He beat two guys on Thursday, and he has a medal. That's big time. Him and uh, Sabatini, by the way, shot a best ball 57 on That's right. They were in the same Sunday. Group. Yeah, they're in the same group. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. And, you know, Pan is not somebody that his, his numbers are not, they're not great. He kind of pop, he was a good amateur and he kind of pops up and wins every once in a while. But he's not somebody that coming into the event that, sh- that you, he, he's not the Xander where you're like, oh, if you give him four rounds, he's going to, that's like cream rising to the top. That's not him. But he went out and did it, and he did it against, you know, Morikawa's throwing darts at him. Rory's hitting yeah. it like 70 yards past him. That was pretty cool. I, You know, it, it's a – I think that'll be one that certainly he remembers for a while, and I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great, especially I after d- how he started. Yeah, I don't want people to remember that Morikawa's ball got plugged in the face of a bunker and leads to a bogey or whatever, and that's how Pan wins it with a par. You should remember that after Morikawa nearly flies it into the cup, uh, CT Pan backs it up with one just as close. Like that's a big time moment. Knowing that's what you literally have to stuff this close and make birdie here. The playoff was just as exciting as the ending, by the way. Yeah, was. Lot, I mean, it was. It was like. It was so funny that there, I mean, there were like 13 people on the 10th green at one point. They were, I, I was that, (laughs) that shot when they pulled out and everyone was just buzzing around the green, reading their putts, caddy and player. It was just like, it was chaos out there. It was, it was extremely chaotic. And I think that's up there with, with Sabatini 61 is what I'll remember from this is that it felt like a, I tweeted this, but it felt like a, a U.S. Open local qualifier where you got like a 14 for 10 and you're trying to beat mm-hmm. the daylight and you've got 50 people out there. Look at this. Yeah, this is Look crazy. how many people are on the screen. If you're watching on YouTube, this is what, 3, 6, 9, t- uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's like 14 people on this green. There's are almost as many as there are in the gallery. And I like that because there were so many, they had to play in two groups. They played in a foursome and a threesome. And the guys who finished first are put like, like we did in high school, stand on the side of the green and watch the rest of the guys come in and see what happens. Yeah. The champion <laughs> golfer of the year is waiting to see if Rory McElroy is going to join him for his third or for his second playoff hole. It was unbelievable. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was, it really, it was really that. I thought that's when like the whole thing got really fun and everybody's loopy because it's three in the morning and we've been watching golf for like seven hours. And I thought that was, I thought that was super fun. A little disappointing um, Sunday for Hideki, who he shot a 69 that's two under par. Didn't play particularly well out of the gate. Never really. I mean, the putter. Listen, I'm. Not, I don't think I can blame Hideki for for kind of the putter playing him out of the playoff and down the stretch because that's not his strong suit. But it's always tough to watch when Hideki loses the flat stick. Yeah, I thought that, and maybe this. I don't know if this will be a popular take or if you'll agree with it, but I. It felt like he kind of played his way out of it early. And he could have gotten it back late, but he he was leaning on his putter late, and, it, and it's just not really the play for him, you know. It and yeah. so he he I don't know. I was I was rooting for him. I was rooting for Sung Jay to shoot like a fifty five or something. To- <laughs> he tried to for a while. I mean, he I know there was a lot of guys who had a lot of holes left, but he was making a move uh, through like ten. I was like, okay, he if he plays his last nine at like twenty nine. Yeah, maybe he has a chance here. Yeah, I wish him and Siwoo had both been uh, a little bit closer. But you know, the Hideki thing—he didn't. I thought it was interesting because in a lot of his interviews, he didn't seem as 
concerned about the playing in Japan thing as maybe the rest of us were. He he kind of was just treating it as like, oh, it's a big event. He didn't he didn't really acknowledge or address the Japan thing, or or maybe he did, and I just didn't, and I just missed it. How much? Okay, I'm I'm assuming, and this isn't not not specific to that point right there, but how much of Hideki do you think gets lost in translation? Because uh, yeah, for sure. Because I go back to what he said about the Masters, where they're like, "What did you do during the rain delay?" And he said, "I was on my phone." And yeah. like, there's either there's either something where most every other player would have just said, "I took some time to to get away and to think, you know, to not think about golf." Or like he's being like, is he being literally translated by his translate? You know what I mean? I just think, I think so much gets lost both in the context and the emotion of how he speaks that it's really hard to parse through Hideki quotes. Well, that's, that's why the, you know, the emotion after he won Augusta was so yes, mean yes. meaningful because yes. you didn't need you a translator for it. For sure. Yeah. Like you almost did. I mean, you didn't need to do the post round press conference. Like right. he did it on his walk to the scoring tent, you know? Yeah. So I think that's an interesting point. And I think it would have been, it got mentioned on the broadcast a million times, but I think it would have been more meaningful for, uh, I don't know if this changes it for him, but for us, if there had been a ton of people, I mean, remember the, uh, what was it that they played in, in, uh, was it the Zozo in Japan in, in, uh, 19 yeah. tiger won it tiger yeah. won it yeah i won it started three over they had the skins match before it was him rory hideki and jason day right That's yeah and match. that was like that was crazy remember how many people were out there it was bonkers it yeah was it, like it was wild unbelievable yeah and so that would have been that would have been cool i i feel like that would have really brought some kind of like depth to the sunday finish even though he didn't end up, you know, meddling. Yeah. Great result either way to fit, to get into a playoff for um, uh, a bronze when everyone was like, Oh, the pressure just might be too much for him. I yeah. mean, the guy, the guy, the guy balled out. It was great for sure. Do you have anything else before I do this Olympic draft contest update? Yeah, I got, I got a couple other notes. Uh, one, we should place, and I don't, I don't know how you want to do this. We should place more emphasis on second and third at other events. I was thinking about that as we were kind of talking about silver and bronze and listen, like winning being first at a 156 at a major is meaningful, but man, so is getting second, you know, and, and it's not, I, I don't know. I, like it's not as meaningful obviously, but there's some, we just, I feel like we whiff on that with golf. It's so hard to finish second. So how do we do it? I don't know. Because I, I like for the Olympics, it almost feels like, oh, you meddled. Like that was awesome. And that's like a big deal. And it, I almost feel like we put too much emphasis on it. And we shouldn't, <laughs> and we shouldn't do that for majors because the whole point of them, of, of, of like there only being four of them and judging guys by how many they win is that it's mm. really, really hard to do. But I just feel like we lose a little bit of like the, you know, there's some luckiness in there that it's like, man, you finished second so i don't know i don't know maybe yeah, that's well, dumb well hold on no because i mean if you if you beat um let me just do this real quick um how do i want to say this yeah okay so so if you win you've beat like 99 point or you beat 100 percent of uh your playing competitors you finish second you would beat like 99.4 percent of them like it's not that big of a difference but we treat it like it is it, yeah, it just it provides more like context to like Louis Oosthuizen's career because I I, I, I would, feel like people it would even people, make it would even make like Tiger and Jack's careers way better if we and if Phil we, and Phil Tiger has I think this is the number you can correct me if I'm wrong producer Jacob Tiger's got 26 top three finishes at majors and Phil has 24. Wow. So Tiger has 26 medals at majors and Phil has 24. I think we should just change to, um, I think we should just do it like baseball Do go to percentages. Ty, you know, Tiger Woods has won 23% or whatever of his, of his victories or fest finished inside the top three, 35% of major championships. It's interesting because I was looking at, uh, I was looking at the Spanish tennis players, Wikipedia page today. 
You have, you uh, have, a, you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I donate to Wikipedia, by the way. So if if you're if you work at Wikipedia, I give my money because it, I do use it all the work time. At Wiki- who works at Wikipedia? I thought I thought Wikipedia I, was like. I th- no, I think they have like. I'm sure they do. A, a few employees. <laughs> Which, by the way, it sucks to create like the eighth biggest or the eighth most trafficked website in the world, and you you don't really like make. Mo- it's not like non. It's a nonprofit. I need. I need. Yeah, I need to know more about how Wikipedia. There's works. a great. Uh, who's the guy that started it? Jimmy Wales. He was on. I can't believe we're talking about this at four in the morning. He was on uh, either How I Built This. I think he was on How I Built This, and. How I built this is always good, so you can go listen to that. Um, so I'm on the Spanish tennis players Wikipedia page, and they do percentage of um, like winning percentage at Wimbledon or whatever. Like if you make it to the quarters, you won. T- your record was like six and or whatever four and one. Right. And so over time, that kind of adds up. I think we. I think that would be actually pretty cool for golf if you did percentage of guys you beat at majors, right? Ooh. It's it's a yeah. different it's a different measurement, but I I just I feel like it's so binary with these tournaments that it's like you either won or you did anything else, and it's like I I just is that the best way to do it? I I think wins are so meaningful, I really do, and I don't want to I don't want to move away from that. I just I think I want something in addition to it to kind of contextualize everything else. Is that fair? It's very fair. Okay, we'll figure something else. Uh, what else, what else you got? I got uh, so I think one thing that hurts this event, especially this iteration of it, the course was it didn't it didn't feel like <laughs> Rory Sabatini's sixty one was great. That ain't a major championship course, right? Rory Sabatini's not shooting sixty one on a major championship like course on a Sunday in contention. He's just not going to, and I think that takes a I like that takes away a little bit of the event for me. If you if you have it and it's like super hard and it and some of that's weather I get it some of it maybe you don't have a major championship type course in the area that you can utilize but I I think that takes away from this event a little bit for me not a ton but I think a little bit I thought on on I guess it was Friday that we were I I, I really liked the course and I still really liked it but like a third of the course uh, was even par or worse on friday and there was like a 77 out there there was a 76 i mean thomas peter shot a 76 he was 11 shots worse in round two than he was in round one and i was like okay like there's there's some there's some danger out here there are some high numbers lurking we didn't see that the other three days now Mm-mm. the counterpoint would be uh you only get a chance to do this once and and first of all this this excludes the fact that uh it, it is it was wet and there was not like an ounce of wind the entire week but yeah um we only get to do this once every four years. Do you want the winning score to be what? Uh, I don't. I don't know if I care about the winning score. I just don't need a a uh, the two hundred ranked player in the world shooting sixty one on Sunday. Like yeah. that's not in play at a, at an open, right? Yeah. At a, at a U.S. Open, at an Open Championship. That's a better way to put it than say what the than saying what the winning score is. Yeah, I don't really care. I you know I thought the Rio. I was looking back on the score on the leaderboard there and that it, it created that separation that you see with kind of faster, firmer courses where if you're hitting yeah. great shots, you're going to be way out in front. Yeah. There, um, was a gap. there was a gap too. Wasn't there? Yeah. There was a, there was a big gap between third and fourth. They kept referencing uh, Thomas Peters got fourth in Rio. And I was like, it was like six well, shots. Back. Yeah. It wasn't, the, it wasn't very close. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I thought, Peters actually had a great quote that I applied to Rory. So Peters on Thursday shot what he shoot 65 or whatever. Yes. And and he said he was he wasn't feeling that well and he said and this and so he was asked like how would you shoot 65 and he said well I just didn't think about where not to hit it. I didn't think about where to like where not to hit the ball. I only thought about where I should hit it. He should so, do that more often. Well, he should. Well, everybody should do that more often. But Rory had a similar quote. He was talking about Royal St. George's. And he was talking about 14, the par five there with, that's got out of bounds to the right. And he said, you know, I was so worried. I think it was on the weekend or on Sunday about hitting it out of bounds. And I, I just I, I, I didn't mm. like 
trust myself to hit the like to, to kind of like have the confidence to hit the shots and it was almost like he was worried about where not to hit it rather than focusing on just like this is where i have to hit it that seems so basic that i kind of love that these guys struggle with the same thing that you and i do thinking about where the danger is and well, not I think, being able to not think about where the danger is. Well, because I th this goes back to the Padraig Harrington quote about experience versus loss of innocence because or experience versus innocence. I think innocent, like when you're 22, you're like, I'm, I'm the best player in the world. I'm going to hit it 320, like 10 feet from that right hand fence. Right? right. And when you're 32 and you're <laughs> just got things going on in your head, you're like, okay, what's the smart play here? Right. And there's some right. balance. There's some balance to be had there. But I thought that was super interesting. I thought Rory talking about how relaxed he was all week was interesting. He talked a ton about, you know, I just kind of came in nonchalant and he played, he played really well. Okay. You know, now his floor is like, it, you know, he should be, should be T7. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, I think that context needs to be provided. But, um. Yeah, I don't know. I I thought his week was really interesting. And then a ton of guys talking about, including Rory, JT, all these guys that the Olympics. JT got I think a little out over his skis on Sunday when he said it's the coolest experience of my life, like better than the Ryder Cup. I, I don't know that he's going <laughs> to he be was saying, in the moment. <laughs> yeah, he was very <laughs> caught up in it. Uh, I don't know if he will be saying the same thing at Whistling Straits on the first tee when there's twenty thousand people standing there, but. Um, it was cool to hear that. I, I thought that was uh, I thought that was fun to hear from from some guys. Well, in modern Olympic history, we've had uh, COVID, we've had Zika, and we've had a lot of people, a lot of the top players withdrawing for a lot of reasons. So to get some of the top players in the world who are advocating for it, you imagine is really good for the future of the games. Yeah, for sure. And I think you go Paris and LA, the next two Olympics, and those are those will yeah. the, those will be the best fields that that uh, that we've seen. Yeah, Le Golf National and Riviera. Like, let's let's go. Those are those. Yeah, it's gonna be stellar. yeah. Uh, well, I think that's all. It's just, okay. Last couple of things. Scripting was horrible. Uh, we need more <laughs> mixed team events. Generally, it's been so fun to see in other sports. We need them in every sport. And then that's all I got. Um, the scripting. I mean, I could I could do two hours on the scripting, but yeah, the scripting needs work. That's uh, it, it's just. I mean, India? listen. India's Did you work, see India? India's was bad. Um, there was a lot of bad ones, but there. That's not that's not unusual. But the fact that like when now it's in a team and now it's like uh you know flag colors. It's just it's tough. It's tough. horrific. 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 Yeah. Quick note. Uh, I won every single bet this week and won and swept the betting cards. Thank you very much. Abe answer over Patrick Reed, Corey Connors over Sung JM, Colin Morikawa to finish inside the top five. Cash them. Yeah. The Morikawa one, you, you uh, had to. They all count the, the same, end. sir. They all For count sure. the same. <laughs> I think I hit, uh, I had Xander top 10. I had, uh, that might be the only one I got. Did Peters finish ahead of Alex Norn? I didn't see the final. They tied. Oh, wake up from the heavens. They tied. <laughs> that's that's brutal. I had Johnny Vegas top 10. I think he finished like T13 or something. T16. Yeah, T16. Um, also, here we go. This is the Olympic draft update. If you missed out, we each drafted uh, three nations that have two men and two women. Oh, thank you, Jacob. Playing. Uh, and, oh, I'm going to make this bigger on my screen so I can read these. So, in fourth place after the men's Olympic Games is Greg. He has Team North America plus Spain, so Canada and Mexico. So he got – who did he get? Corey Connors was 13 under. That was his best ball for Mexico – or for, for, for Canada. Carlos Ortiz was 12 under for Mexico. And Arnis, I believe, was his best for Spain. Six under. Yes, that is correct. In third place – uh, Kyle, you are in there. So you have Great Britain, Thailand, and Denmark. Great Britain got you, give me Paul Casey, 15 under par. Thailand was, I believe, Jazz. Yes, he was nine under. And 
Denmark was either Hansen or Hoygaard. I think it was Hoygaard. Six under? No. Hansen, nine under. Oh, okay. Nice. I uh, feel pretty good. I've got the I've got the the Thai women coming next week. Yeah. I'm pumped. Yeah, you, you should be. The because those were the two, I believe, like cumulatively best ranked women, I think, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're in good shape. Uh second is oh me. I have Japan, so I had Hideki. Italy, which I believe was Guido, and Sweden, which was no Norin. So I'm at 35 under par. And Jacob, wow, producer Jacob, who created the rules of the game, happens to be in first place. <laughs> Can't fool us. Uh, Australia, who got Cam Smith, 14 under. Ireland, so he took Rory's 15 under. And China, which ended up being Carl Yuan, I believe, eight under par. So Jacob's in the lead, 37 under. This is, we'll this is great. This is super fun. And, and then we've got the women next week. And yeah, yeah. So just sort of, you know, out the horn you know it's like this is like the mixed event like we were talking about where if you watch those those mixed medleys in the swimming you really didn't know who was winning until the final anchor leg was coming down the stretch how do you how do you yeah that's true how do you feel rick about sabatini trying to trying to get in uh you could uh what's her last name sasso sasso you could, you could right. sasso's so when i read that i was like you tweeted out i don't know what the exact phrase it was but it was perfect and i was like what does this mean? I was like, what, what is, what is happening? Why, why would Kyle yeah. wouldn't tweet this if this didn't have a me, a meaning. And then I finally put the, the Rory stuff together and I loved it. Um, I thought it was so interesting. Like he was basically preparing for a potential playoff and he was just like messing around on the putting green with like whoever was over there. Some of the women's competitors. Um, I don't know if he was trying to stay loose. I don't know. I mean, imagine telling yourself on January one that silver medalist Rory Sabatini would be giving putting <laughs> lessons to U.S. Open champion Yuka Sasso on the putting green in in uh, Tokyo. I mean, what? It, this is the greatest sport in the world. No it's other un, place it's, can you get it. It's incredible. Cannot script this stuff. What a night! What a what a weekend! What a weekend! I think it's time for us to get some sleep. Because that'll do it. Uh, we will be back, I assume, on Monday. I don't even know what day it is. Monday, there's a tournament coming up, WGC. DFS I, might preview a, I might be asleep until Monday. Go for it. Um, Producer Jacob does all the hard work behind the scenes. Thank you very much, Producer Jacob. That right there is Kyle Porter. You can find him on Twitter, at Kyle Porter CBS. You can find me, at Rick Run Good. This has been The First Cut, and we'll catch you next time. 